Hello students, welcome to the 10th lecture of the online course of Nanophotonics, Plasmonics and Metamaterials. Today we will be discussing matrix theory of dielectric layered media. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a quick recap of the Fresnel's equation and then we will introduce a very effective theoretical tool called transfer matrix or T matrix method that can be used for calculation of reflection and transmission across any multi-layered medium. So in doing that, we will first learn how to obtain T matrix for an interface, then we will look for the T matrix for a layer and then how to obtain an overall uh, T matrix for a multi-layered system. We will try to correlate T matrix to reflection and transmission coefficients so that we are able to calculate reflection and transmission of any multi-layer system from T matrix that we will see. And then we will take an example of a very popular optical device called uh, fabri paro interferometer and we will obtain the T matrix for that device. Uh, we will show you how to do that calculation and also we will obtain reflection and transmission coefficients and other important parameters for a fabri paro cavity that will be finesse and Q factor. So here is a quick recap of Reynolds equation. So if you remember from the last few lectures, we have discussed about light falling on a particular interface between two different media. In that case, some portion of the light is getting reflected and some portion is getting transmitted. Now depending on the polarization state of the incident light, the amount of reflection or transmission will vary. Okay? So, in the case of S polarized light, so if you remember that S polarization is basically, so the polarization where the electric field basically strikes out or it is perpendicular to the plane of incidence. Now when I say what is plane of incidence, plane of incidence is basically that plane where the incident ray, the normal to the interface and the reflected ray, they all lie in one plane. Okay? So if you consider the incident wave he propagating this way, okay? you can consider the electric field to be either striking out that is as polarization or it can be parallel to the plane of polarization. Okay? So in case for S polarized light which is also known as known as uh, T polarized light, okay? you can find out what is the reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient that is R perpendicular and T perpendicular. On the other hand for T polarization light, or polarized light which is also known as known as uh, parallel polarization or TM polarization. Okay? So you can find out what is R parallel and T parallel and uh, we have seen that in the case of normal incidence that is when theta i equals 0 these equations basically become 1. So R parallel will become equal to R perpendicular and that boils down to a very simple equation that is n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2. Okay? What is n1 and n2? So n1 is the refractive index of the first medium, n2 is the refractive index of the second medium. We also can see that the transmission coefficient t parallel and t perpendicular will also become same and they will become 2n1 over n1 plus n2. So with this understanding, we have to now approach with real life problems where there are multiple you know layered medium that we will uh, encounter in that case how to use fresnel's equation okay and that method is known as transfer matrix method always remember here fresnel equations actually tell you the reflection and transmission from one particular interface okay now let's take a general problem so the general problem is of a wave propagation in and through a multilayer structure. So the multilayer structure can be regarded as an optical system where there is one input port and one output port. And the transfer matrix method will be allow will allow you to calculate the overall reflection from this multilayer system and what is finally coming out of this. So in all this you know multilayered there are many many interfaces that you will be encountering like here. So if you consider this is your uh, incident wave that is coming down with a wave vector of k and hitting this multi-layered structure as you can see there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 particular layers. Okay? 
So, this particular layer, every layer will have a different interface because this one, let us assume this uh, structure is in air. So, you have air and this particular material. So, you have this as one interface. Then you have this material and this material. So, this is another interface. Similarly, this is one interface, this is one interface, this is one and interface and so on. So, there are many, many interfaces which are coming in one after another. Also, there are layers of different thickness, different material property. So, how light wave is basically going through each of this interface and then layer, interface and then layer, all these things can be taken care of by the T matrix or transfer matrix. So, let us see how it works. So, let the normal to the interface plane. So, this is the interface plane as you can see. Okay. We assume that the normal to the all interface plane is basically x. Okay. And in that case, the interface planes are basically parallel to y z that are that those are basically vertically out of this. Okay. You can see. And uh, we have also defined different uh, refractive index for different region. It means there are different material present at different position. That is how the multilayer structure has been made. So, if you write that n x equals n naught, that is basically for the region when x is less than x naught. It means before x naught, the material is always n 0 or n naught. Okay? Then you can see that between x 0 and x 1 means in this region, the material property is different. It is having a refractive index of n 1. So, this is basically n x. It means the permittivity of this multilayer structure is a function of x and it is changing. Okay? And this is changing discreetly in different steps and this is how it is written. So, between x 1 and x 2 as you can see here it is given as n 2 and then between x n minus 1 and x okay, that is this one you are basically having x n okay? or you can say that when x is greater than x n minus 1 that is when you are you know you have crossed the multilayer structure or the light wave has crossed the multilayer structure what is the refractive index it is able to see that is small n capital N. Okay? Fine. So, this is how you have defined all the you know re refractive index for each of this medium. So, you have to remember that there are two possibilities of the incident wave. It can be either a S wave that is a T E wave. So, in that case the electric field is either striking out or it is perpendicularly going in as it is shown here. This is the wave vector. Okay? And it can be also P wave that is parallel wave or T m wave. In that case, the electric field is actually parallel to this plane. So, there are these two possibilities. So, we can actually define the thickness of each of this layer. So, you can call this thickness as a parameter d. So, you can call d i is basically x i plus 1 minus x i. So, that is a general formula that will tell you about the thickness of each of this layer and you can refer to each of these interfaces in a general form using say i and i plus 1. So, one interface is formed between i and i plus 1. Okay? So, that way you can generalize them. Now, what happens in this case that the normal to the interface plane okay, and the wave vector they define a particular plane that is the incident plane. So, what we have seen here. Okay? So, when so that is this in this case the incident plane is basically the screen okay? because that is the interface. The interface is basically uh, perpendicular to this particular uh, screen. So, you will see that the wave vector is basically along this plane we are assuming that. Okay? And in doing so, we are also considering that k x component is 0. It means the wave vector will not have any y component. Okay? That is an assumption. Even if they have it, 
we can use transfer matrix method but the calculation becomes little complicated okay so let's assume in this case that you know the wave is particularly lying in that plane okay so the wave vector is basically in x z plane okay that is this particular plane now we will we'll consider you know each of these cases t and t m okay and we will be able to describe the electric field in terms of its amplitude which is E and E is a function of x, y and z. Now in this structure each layer will have the contribution of forward propagating wave okay it means it is towards the increasing x okay and it will also have contributions from some reflection from the interface okay. Similarly, it will also have backward propagating wave as I told you the reflections are considered as backward propagating wave. So, the total field that you can see in layer i can be given as, so this is the total field. So, total field is basically a f that is the amplitude of the forward moving wave. So, the forward moving wave is moving towards plus x direction okay? and it has also got a component along z okay so it is a f e to the power minus j k x i x plus k z z plus a b a b is the backward one okay backward propagating wave so you can write e to the power minus j so backward propagating wave will propagate along minus x direction so it will be minus k x i times x plus k z z okay and then wh when you break this you know uh, exponential into two components and then you if you club this two together you can write this as the forward electric field so this is the forward electric field this is the backward electric field or you can say forward propagating electric field or backward propagating electric field okay and what are these components so kxi is basically square root of ni k0 whole square minus kz square okay so in this case i is nothing but all those different uh, layers that you will be encountering so starting from zero because if you remember here the first layer the incident medium is zero and then the transmission medium is n so until that you will have all different wave vector in each of these layers okay so i will range from 0 1 2 up to n what is k naught that is basically the free space wave vector given by omega by c now do you understand this one this is nothing but that the wave vector k naught will get modified in the in every layer which has got a refractive index of n i so it will become n i k naught and n i k naught is nothing but so you can write in vector form that n i k naught square is equal to the x component square plus y component square okay so that way you actually get this so from that only you can obtain what is the x, x component now here is the pictorial representation of what i was describing so in this case let us take that you are talking about interface between n i and and j so there are two layers okay so right now let us find out what is the transfer matrix for one interface so these are two layers ni and nj so there is a interface in between okay clear so this interface it is at a position of xi that is the position of the interface now let us assume that you have you know we will be writing the forward propagating waves and backward propagating waves in the two region so this is xi so anything before xi will write as xi minus and anything after this xi boundary will write as xi plus so right now what we are doing we are trying to correlate this okay so let us first write we will not look into the matrix equation first let us write what is ef xi plus that is so whenever there is some incident wave okay that is forward propagating the forward direction we will write it as ef and then to mention the location we are saying it is xi minus 
Now, at this interface, there will be some reflection. So, reflection is a backward propagating wave. So, we write it as E B. And what is the location? It is again behind the uh, in interface. So, we will put X i minus. Now, there is some transmission. So, that transmission part we write as E F x i plus. Why x i plus? Because it is on the other side of the interface. There could be another ray if there is like another source on the other side, but it is not the case. We are assuming that the source is only from one side. So, this, this line can be disregarded. So, in that case, what you can write, okay? but if this is there, let us assume if it is there, what will be this called? This is basically a backward propagating electric field the location is x i plus clear. So, now let us try to write down the equation for E f x i plus that is the forward propagating wave that is in this region. So, this is nothing but you take this one the forward propagating wave and multiply with the transmittance. So, whatever is the transmittance across this interface we name it as T i j. So, T i j times this one. Okay? So, that is one component. Another thing would be if there is a backward propagating wave here, some part will get reflected and that will also come here. right? So, this two rays will be on the same direction. So, the other component will be R j i. Why j i not i j? Because here the light is actually in region j and it is going towards i. So, it is R j i reflection from the interface while going from j to i. So, it is R j i and then you multiply E b x i plus clear. So, this is how you get this equation equals T i j E f x i minus plus R j i E b x i plus. Okay? Again, if you try to write what is this one that is this particular wave. So, how is this particular wave coming? So, this particular wave is basically a reflection of this uh, forward propagating wave or it could be transmission of this particular backward propagating wave on the other side. So, E b x i minus can be written as R i j E f x i minus this one plus T j i that is this one the transmission across this times E b x i plus clear. So, this is how you are able to uh, make a relationship between the forward and backward propagating waves on both sides. Now, as you can see they are bit you know uh, x i plus x i minus they are mixed up. So, if you try to you know do some um, algebra and try to rearrange the terms in such a way that you get you know all the left side fields in terms of the right side fields that is how you can rearrange them. In that case, so if you have the right side fields you multiply with a particular matrix you will be able to get the left side field. So, that way this becomes the transfer matrix of this particular interface. So, how do you obtain this? This is very simple you actually start with this and try to do the algebra to rearrange the terms ok nothing else. And here you also can use some other you know symmetry relation from the Fresnel equation. Something like R i j will be equal to minus R j i and there is another equality so that is T i j times T j i minus R i j times R j i will be equal to 1. So, if you use these two relations which are coming from Fresnel equation, you can easily um, verify this by yourselves. If you go to the first slide where I have shown the Fresnel equations, if you actually put the values here, you will be able to prove those uh, relationships. Okay? Fine. So, after you do that, you can actually simplify this further and this will get a very nice look. It looks like this. So, all the left side fields, okay, the forward and the backward field, they look like 1 over T i j times 1 R i j, R i j 1, this is the matrix and then these are the right side fields. So, forward and backward propagating both the fields are there. Got it? So, this is how you obtain, you know, uh, the 
transfer matrix for an interface. Now, if you see here that what is uh, Rij? Rij is nothing but the reflection coefficient, right? Between the interface i and j. So, if you see here, what is the reflection coefficient? This is basically the ratio of this field over this field. So, you can write this over this, right? And Rij is already known to you from Fresnel coefficient. So, you can plug in those values here, which is Ni cos theta i minus Nj cos theta j over Ni cos theta i plus Nj cos theta j, okay? Similarly, you can also write what is Tij, Tij will be Ef Xi plus that is the transmitted electric field over the incident electric field, incident electric field is this one. So, you can also see that this is nothing but 1 plus Rij and that takes this particular term when you put this value of Rij. Okay. Similarly, you can also do this exercise for P polarization or Tm polarization, there the value of Rij the ratio is still same that only determines but then the value here will be different similarly tij will also be different so this is finally the thing that you can obtain because you have to talk in terms of rij and tij uh, parameters so when you write the transfer matrix capital tij for the wave propagation through an interface between layer i and j this is how it looks like so this is the transfer matrix capital tij will be 1 over small tij this is the transmission coefficient and 1 rij and then rij 1 so which value to choose depending on which polarization of the light you are incidenting you can choose that value and that will allow you to compute this clear now this is what is happening in the interface and after the light has actually crossed the interface it is actually inside a particular layer now depending on the material and the depth of the layer there will be some changes in the phase being accumulated okay so let us see how do we actually uh, make a matrix of a layer so the next step is to build a transfer matrix for wave propagation through a layer so let us consider that layer is i in that case the uh, refractive index can be written as n i. So, what are the waves here? So, this is the wave that has entered. Okay. So, it has basically come from this interface, right? So, we will call it as E f x i minus 1, but it is on the other side. So, it is plus. Fine. So, it goes like this and this wave only will become the forward propagating wave of x i minus because now if you see this is another interface this is the forward uh, electric field but this is on the left side of that interface so you can write e f x i minus now from here what happens there is there will be some reflection okay we do not for, forget about the transmission here because that will give you the interface uh, transfer matrix of the interface but we are interested about the what is happening inside a particular layer. So, when you move this uh, and hit this particular interface, you get some reflection. How do you name this reflection? Eb xi minus backward propagating and it is xi minus and this field when it will travel and reach here, it will be called as Eb xi minus 1 plus. Now, these two electric field, do you think they will be exactly same? or there will be a phase delay because of the path they are traveling from this point to this point. So, this is what will be the contribution of a particular layer. So, let us try to write them in terms of equation. So, you can write this equation that E f x i minus is nothing but E f x i minus 1 plus then whatever the phase it has accumulated here. So, you have to look for the x component. So, you will e to the power minus j k x i d i. Okay? And then this one also can be correlated that this field e b x i minus 1 plus can be e b x i minus times this much amount of phase that is added e to the power minus j k x 
I D I. Now, what is DI? DI is, as I mentioned before, DI is nothing but the thickness of this layer of material Ni. So, this is DI, this thickness. Okay. Now, we can write it in short form that the transfer matrix. So, you can actually again do the same kind of maths and find out that the transfer matrix that correlates the uh, you know left side field with the right side field will be something like this one. So, capital T i will be e to the power j phi i 0 and 0 e to the power minus j phi i. Now, what is phi i is nothing but k x i d i that is the amount of phase. So, it is a very generic uh, quantity or general uh, like it is a in general a complex quantity I must say and in the case of a lossless medium and in the absence of total internal reflection you will see that this phase is a real quantity and how do you calculate this phase as I told phi i is nothing but k x i d i. So, k can be k x i can be written as 2 pi over lambda naught times n i right and then you have to also look for the x component it is a k x right. So, what is the k x if this is the direction of wave propagation what is this component if this angle is theta i it is cos theta i right. So, that is how cos theta i has actually come and distance is d i. So, this is how you obtain it. So, if you look into this particular uh, equation that also tells you one more important thing that phi i is basically a phase change, but this phase change is not related to the amount of the path length a c. Okay? So, it is not about from here to here okay? because of the angle you have you have seen that you are basically considering a 90 degree angle here and this is a plane this is another plane. So, this phase difference is basically coming from the distance between these two planes and this perpendicular plane to the wave vector is nothing but the phase front. So, d or the phase change that you are calculating is basically coming from the difference in the phase front that is a b prime. So, that is the difference between the two phase fronts and phi corresponds to that particular value of a b prime clear. So, now we have got both the things ready we know what is the um, transfer matrix for one interface between two different material and we also know what is the transfer matrix for one particular layer okay? and then if you put them together you can add them up. Okay, or multiply not add them up you have to multiply them okay? and that will give you an overall transfer matrix. So, if you write the left side with respect to the right side quantities then the transfer matrix is called T 0 to n. If you remember the first layer is 0 the last layer was n. So, this matrix will also have 4 components T 1 1 or 4 elements T 1 2 T 2 1 and T 2 2. And how do you obtain this? You have to start with you know the first layer. So, if you remember if you go back you will see that yeah. So, this is one layer. So, you will get a transfer matrix for this one, but this is the first this is the layer where the wave is already there the wave is propagating in that medium. So, you do not do anything for that. So, what you first encounter is the interface between n 0 and n 1. So, you have to got a transfer matrix for this one. Okay. Then you have this particular layer, then you have this interface, then again you have this layer and so on. Finally, you will also have this interface and then this particular layer. So, that many transfer matrices you have to put together and multiply and that is how you will be able to get the overall transfer matrix which is given as T 0 to n. So, it looks bit cumbersome and uh, lengthy process, but you can use MATLAB codes for writing this transfer matrix and you can do the matrix multiplication very easily and that will give you the overall transfer matrix of a multi-layered system. 
Okay. So now let's look into how to obtain the overall transfer matrix. As I mentioned, that this expression can be used for solving a variety of uh, wave propagation problem. So first thing, you will start with uh, you know transfer matrix for that plane or that interface where the plane wave was propagating and then it will encounter the first uh, first layer so you have to put the transfer matrix for that interface okay so first interface then layer then interface then layer and finally you will get another interface and then it will enter into another layer and that's it that will be the overall transfer matrix now as we mentioned earlier also that we can assume that there is no field that is coming from the right side that means e b n minus x n minus 1 plus is always 0 there is no electric field from the other direction so once you do that you can simplify the equation like this e f x 0 minus e b x 0 minus can be correlated by the transfer matrix this is the overall transfer matrix that is why look at the superscript 0 to n 0 to n and these are the elements of the matrix 1 1 1 2 2 1 n 2 2 and here we have put that this term is 0 ok so e b x n minus 1 plus is 0 clear so this is the final transfer matrix now Will you be able to correlate the reflection and transmission from uh, this transfer matrix? The answer is yes. Now, if you see, this is the forward propagating wave. That was basically the incident wave. What is E B X zero minus? That is the reflected wave from the very first interface. So, if you want to get reflection coefficient, it will be nothing but the ratio of E B X zero minus over E F X zero minus. And if you talk in terms of uh, the matrix elements which you have just computed, you will compute this matrix right by multiplying all the matrices. You can actually get this ratio by doing T0 to N, you have to look for the 2, 1 element, this one, and divide it by the 1, 1 element. Then this will give you this will give you uh, the reflection coefficient. What about transmission? The transmission coefficient is nothing but this over the incident one. So, E f x n minus 1 plus divided by E f x 0 minus ok and that can be simplified and you can from the equation you can see that it is simply 1 over t 1 1 ok. So, the main important part is to calculate this uh, transfer matrix once you are done with the calculation you have got the four elements you can find out what is the reflection coefficient what is the transmission coefficient and uh, once you know the reflection and transmission coefficient reflectance and transmittance are very easy to find reflectance will be nothing but modular square of your reflection coefficient transmittance will be nothing but real of n n cos theta n over real of n 0 that is the incident media times cos theta 0 this ratio will be multiplying the modulus of transmission coefficient square very simple and always remember if it is a non absorbing media capital R plus capital T should be equal to 1 ok. So, that completes the discussion on transfer matrix. So, this transfer matrix will allow you to find out you know reflection or transmission from any multi-layered system and it is a very very effective tool lot of researchers even today use you know transfer matrix method for calculating reflection and transmission from multi-layered systems. One such multi-layered system is fabry perot interferometer cavity or also called as etalon. So, you might have heard of this fabry perot interferometer before. So, it actually tells you that it is an optical resonator. So, you have optical or you can say light rays entering here ok and they will there will be some reflection obviously. So, say this is the light ray incidenting ok then you have got some reflection it has entered after being refracted into this medium. 
so this is n prime this medium is n and again this is n prime the same old medium so you can take air glass air to easily understand okay so this wave has entered hit this interface some part got reflected then remaining part got transmitted this transmitted light when it hits this particular interface again some part got reflect reflected okay and remaining will get transmitted out of this reflection when it will hit this particular interface again some part will get reflected remaining will get transmitted and it will go on happening okay so in that case what you will see if all these reflected lights sorry if, if all these lights which are basically coming out uh, of this they constructively interfere you will get a particular color similarly so these are all you can say because these are all back in the same direction you can say all these are basically reflected light all these are on the other side of the incident uh, wave you can say these are all transmitted light okay so you can say that when all of them will interfere constructively you will get a uh, color out there okay so this is how typically etalon or fabriper interferometer works so this is again a multi layer structure one dielectric another dielectric and then third dielectric so this is a three layer system one two and three how many interfaces are there two this is the interface between first and second layer this is the interface between second and third layer okay this is the interface right so it's a three layer system so now we have to first write what is the transfer matrix for t12 this particular interface so this is the formula we can bring from those lessons we have learned today that for a particular uh, interface this is how it looks like okay now r12 and r r12 you can write as r okay t12 you can calculate and find out what it is where you will get this from again these are the fresnel coefficient okay so you can simply do the fresnel coefficients and calculate and put them here what about capital t23 that is basically the transfer matrix for this particular interface that is given as this so here r and here this will be minus r because these are the same media just opposite okay so it was air to glass here it is glass to air so you can put minus r minus r here so as it is also shown that r is nothing but r12 which is minus r23 or if you don't like this kind of short uh, you know simplified relations sim blindly take the fresnel's equation and put the parameters you will get the equations so you have you have got the two transfer matrices what is left the only thing left is the transfer matrix in layer 2 that we name as t2 okay fine so see it is only written 2 not ij format layer 2 so it is only so e to the power j phi 0 e to 0 e to the power minus j phi okay now your job is to put the value of phi here so you can also take this one common and make it look like this so phi is nothing but 2 pi lambda naught that is k naught times n that is the refractive index times l that is the thickness and it is basically the x component so cos theta so this is the value so now you have got all the three matrices t12 t23 and also capital t2 this one this is the layer one so the overall transfer matrix is nothing but you can name it as 1 3 it is like 0 n okay so that is not, nothing but t and that is multiplication of all this transfer matrix so you put all the elements and multiply them okay and after you multiply them you will get the four components once you got the four components your reflection coefficient will be again you go back to this formula reflection coefficient will be nothing but 2 1 element divided by 1 1 element and transmission coefficient will be 1 over the 1 1 element okay that is what so that is very simple so let us see yeah t 2 1 over t 1 2 these are the two elements so from this matrix after multiplication whatever you have got you pick those two two one and uh, one one you have put them here so this becomes your reflection coefficient and 
t will be like this 1 over t11 so you put all these values here this is what you get very simple so this is how you can get the reflection and transmission coefficient obviously it is easy to find out what is the reflectance and transmittance as i mentioned so it will be square of the reflection coefficient also square of the transmission coefficient here the final medium and initial medium are same so that ratio will be 1 okay clear now why this is important this particular um, fabry perot interferometer has got a lot of application even in laser cavity you have fabry perot interferometer so here what is happening so if the incident intensity is taken as unity the first transmitted intensity this one will have you know the values of t12 that is the transmission here okay and then uh, whatever you are getting here is t12 times whatever is the transmission coefficient of this interface that is t23 so this value becomes t12 times t23 similarly that if you look for the reflection con uh, condition the second one this one will get twice reflected so it is getting a reflection from here so it will have r23 also it will have multiplied by r12 on top of that you will have the coefficients of t12 and t23 to find out what is coming out here so they will become you know progressively weaker as you can understand and if you are able to maintain the phase difference okay in that case they will add up constructively and you will get a particular color so the phase difference is nothing but delta phi uh, sorry phase difference is given by delta that is taken as round trip phase difference so it is given as 2 phi so two phi you already know how what is the formula you put 2 phi here and then you can understand that if this round trip phase difference is an integral multiple of pi so if it is equal to m pi then you are able to get a constructive interference and your transmission will be maximum at those particular points okay or you can say at those particular angle theta so in that case you can also find out you know what will be the maximum transmission but in the other case if you take when the round trip phase difference is basically odd multiple of uh, or you can say 2m minus 1 times pi okay in that case you can find out uh, oh it's odd multiple of pi by 2 in that case it will give a minima in the transmission because in that case all these waves will destructively interfere okay so that that is how you are able to fabry perot is able to do the filtering so only at certain uh, wavelength you will get very sharp trans tra transmission other wavelengths will be blocked okay so these are the conditions and if you try to relate it to wavelength so lambda is nothing but c by f or c by nu okay so you can find out the condition for maximal transmission as nu m m is an integer nu or f it is fine so it will be c over 2 nl cos theta so this will tell you that the choice of theta n and l will tell you which frequency you will be letting let out of this particular interferometer so it actually becomes like a filter fabric paro cavity based filter okay so with that you can also find out that you know all transmitted contributions they you know at resonance they will um, interfere constructively but in off resonance the contributions do not go longer uh, they, they will no longer uh, interfere constructively in that case you know the two neighboring resonance frequencies will be separated by so called spectral range free spectral range fsr so that is given as delta nu which is nothing but nu m plus 1 minus nu m so if you do the calculation you see it turns out to be c over 2 nl cos theta that means how much the two resonant frequencies will be different to each other okay so that 
also tells you that you know how much um, channel spacing you can obtain from that particular uh, filter. There is another parameter that is called finesse or you can say fineness, how fine it is. Okay? So, it is directly related to the mirror's reflection at each interface. Why mirror? Because every reflecting surface is a mirror, right? So, in it alone also we have seen that there are two ideally fabri paro cavity um, that is used in a laser, they will have very good reflector in one end and in another one it will be like 99.95 kind of uh, reflectance. So, they are very very good mirror to give you very good spectral selectivity. So, this mirror reflection plays a important role. So, the finesse factor is given as pi square root of r over 1 minus r. So, you, you can see the higher the mirror's reflection at each interface, higher is the finesse, it means the sharper will be the transmission peak. So, sharper peak means you will get you know very good uh, quality output, filtered output. Another important thing that will also correlate, so I already, already gave out the hint that when it is very fine, you also will get very high quality factor and quality factor Q is defined as omega r that is the resonant frequency divided by the spread in frequency, okay, that is delta omega. So, delta omega is nothing but FWHM, full width half maxima, okay. So, it actually gives you a measure of the resonance in the spectrum. Fine. So, this is how it looks like. So, if you take r equals 30, so you will get this uh, solid line. So, you see they are not that fine, not that sharp. So, you still have transmission, but it is not that you know selective. So, on the other side, so this is basically transmission spectrum. So, at this particular um, cases where the phase is 4 times pi or 5 times pi or 6 times pi, it means every m pi, okay. You see there is a resonance, fine. And this is transmission resonance. It means if you look into the reflection spectrum or capital R, which is nothing but modulus of small r square, you will see that there is drop. So, reflection based, it is basically band stop filters, but in the case of, uh, you know, Transmission, you can actually get band pass filters based on fabri paro cavity. So, here you know the cavity length is actually taken care of by this one. So, phi pi pi that actually gives you an idea of what will be the cavity length because this value is changing, fine. So, you can actually correlate with that, but always remember that the resonating peaks will appear at phi equals. Uh, pi by uh, phi, uh, phi will appear at m pi locations where m is an integer fine. So, with that we will conclude our discussion today on T matrix as I mentioned it is a very very useful tool uh, for theoretical calculation of reflection and transmission across any multilayer system. This one, ex this one was an example of a multilayer system it is called fabri paro interferometer or etalon. Okay, it is a three layer system, you can do it for any layer system 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 or even up to 200 layer system does not matter. The same formula of using the transfer matrix for the interface layer, interface layer. Multiply everything, you will get a transfer matrix with only four elements. Okay, And then if you take the ratio of uh, 2, 1 over 1, 1, you get reflection coefficient. If you take the inverse of the uh, 1, 1 element, you get transmission coefficient, once you have both this coefficient, you take the square of it, okay, modulus square of it and for transmittance, you have to add that factor, you get reflection and transmission, that is it, very simple. So, with that, we will try to, we will stop here today and uh, in the next lecture, we will um, start the discussion of 1D photonic crystals. Thank you.